Hello everyone, Tempress here, here to show you how to make some pretty nice looking icons using paint.net. Um, the techniques we'll be using are alpha masking using silhouettes, and for this you will need the alpha mask plugin. I will be able to show you how to find the forums to get plugins for paint.net, but not necessarily how to find the specific plugin. For that, you will be able to find it in a zip file from my Google Docs in a link in the description below. So, first off, how to get to the forums. Well, first, if you've already gotten paint.net, then you should know how to get go to getpaint.net, the website. And so, once you go to getpaint.net, go to the download page, go to the bottom where it says plugins, and click the here link by there. It'll say you may browse and download the plugins here. Go into the page and bam, you are in the plugins form for paint.net. Browse tons of different plugins and just go crazy, experiment, have fun with it. You're going to discover so much that you didn't know you could do with paint.net before. These are all user-made plugins and um, some of them are very good, including the one I'll be using to quickly make some very nice looking icons today. So on to my plugin zip file. Um, once you follow the link to my Google Docs drive, you will find the paint.net plugins.zip file. Go ahead to the top right, click the download link. It will go ahead and throw that into your downloads location. When you find the file, go ahead and extract it and open it up and inside you will find effects and file types folders and these are exactly what they say they are the effects houses all of your plugins for different effects and the file types help add more file type support and in my package I have Photoshop and PaintShop Pro file types for supporting and these will um, allow you to import or load and open these files or with paint.net and possibly save them. Don't hold me up to that, I'm not sure. I always save in paint.net format. Um, but you might like that. Um, let's see here. Once you've done so, go ahead and find your paint.net install location generally located in C, Program Files, paint.net, and you will find, or you should find, effects and file types folders. If they're not there, don't worry, just go ahead and make them and put your effects and file types in there. Making sure that you have the alpha mask file added for this tutorial. So now that you have that, go ahead and open paint.net or close and restart if it's already open. And let's go ahead and start off with a square image. So there's our square image. And we are going to go ahead and make the beginnings of our icon shape. Something simple for the sake of this tutorial. I'm going to kind of square it up a little bit and give it a thick border. And now that I have that, actually, let's go ahead and make it a little thicker. Now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead, duplicate it, rotate it 90 degrees, and shift it to the left so that I can get a pretty cool shape. Now I'm going to use this duplicated rotated layer to cut out the one beneath it. So now that I've copied the entire layer, I'm going to go to effects and alpha mask. And immediately you will see it do its magic. It has now masked out the black in the areas where the black was in the topmost layer, which is serving as our alpha mask layer. Now with this plugin you can use a mask file which is basically a file that you will use as the mask layer or I like pasting from clipboard, that's the default and that's just so that I can make sure that it doesn't tile because if your selection is smaller than the entire um, layer then it's going to start at the top most, the top leftmost corner and tile it all the way through. And for this, that's going to create some pretty funky effects. Um, you might create some pretty cool things with that. Now, 
go ahead and hit OK, but we're not done there. We actually made a mistake. Um, if I remove this background, you will see that the transparent pixels are there, but now the pixels that were transparent are now full-blown white, and that's because we didn't have any values in our mask layer, but we can get those back. If we go ahead and undo it and throw away this background so we can see what's happening, let's go back into the alpha mask and you can now see what's going on. Now there's an invert mask option which creates that and it basically inverts the mask as it says or there's this mix alpha function and the mix alpha just kind of preserves the alpha trans the transparency of the layer that you're masking and that's good we like that however there was that invert mask that created a pretty cool effect so we're going to go ahead and do two different icons for this video and right now we've got that but we are also going to go ahead and alpha mask this the inverse and bam we now have that I'm going to duplicate that layer and flip it horizontally. And then we've got a pretty cool looking icon. And so we're going to hide that for now and focus on our first one. I'm going to take this layer and drop it below the background, kind of to serve as a reminder of what I've used to mask before. And so that I can retune this image if I want to come back to it at a later date. Say I don't like some of the spacing or something. That'll be useful. Trust me. Um, so here's our first icon shape. So say you, you've got your icon shape done, you're happy with it, now you want to add a gradient to it. Great! You, we can totally do that with the alpha mask. So let's go ahead and select a couple different colors. And I'm going to go ahead and do this behind it so I can make sure that I get it in the full amount. I can kind of guesstimate exactly where I want the gradient to be and let's flip it because I kind of like the brighter green on top since we are going to be adding a drop shadow to this kind of have that little effect of light coming down from slightly top area so now we're going to select our icon shape control copy the entire layer and we're going to go ahead and alpha mask this and boom, there you go. Didn't necessarily need to um, check off the Mix Alpha option. There we go. Now, let's add a drop shadow to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a black layer, and we're going to repeat the alpha mask, and boom. Now we've got a black layer, and in the exact same shape, we're going to go ahead and give it a Gaussian blur and bump it up a little bit to 8, drop it down some, and there you have it. A nice looking icon with a gradient on the inside and a drop shadow underneath. Now let's get to our second icon. So let's go ahead and hide that and bring this into focus. I'm getting more of a dark feeling from this one, so I'm going to go ahead and select a dark red and a Genta. I'm going to create the gradient, bring it out, and I'm going to make sure to use a radial gradient. That's what I want to use. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, alpha mask it. And we're going to replicate the same thing. But as you may have noticed in the previous icon, we already have something in the exact same shape we want to use for the drop shadow. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm go ahead and hide that. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat my Gaussian blur. I'm going to drop that down some. And there you have it. Very clean looking icons.